Now, the financial squeeze on Iran seems to be getting tighter. It's no surprise that financial transactions with the countries like the U.S. are banned as part of sanctions to do with Iran's controversial nuclear program. But now, a key regional partner is also clamping down. There are reports that most banks in the United Arab Emirates, which includes Abu Dhabi and Dubai, have now stopped currency transfers with Iran. It could be a serious blow for Iranian businesses and individuals, but it appears that the UAE is trying to clean up its image as an international financial center. Yet at the same time, the UAE is finding itself embroiled with a financial scandal developing in Afghanistan. Money flowing out of Afghanistan to Dubai is being investigated by the Afghan government. Well, we'll be speaking about that to uh, our Al Jazeera's James Space in just a moment. But first, let's cross to Dubai, where Robin Amlo, managing editor of Banker Middle East, joins us now live. Thank you so very much for speaking to us. So how significant is this first, this move by the central bank in uh, the United Arab Emirates? And what impact is this likely to have on uh, trade ties between the UAE and Dubai, given that Iran is a significant trading partner for the UAE? All right, well, let me answer your two questions there, the, the, the last one first, if I may. Yes, it is indeed a significant trading partner. Uh, Dubai has always been, if you like, a port of entry into Iran. You only have to look creekside to see the dows stacked with televisions and refrigerators that are chugging across the Gulf to see that that's still going on. That, of course, at a very low level. But overall, trade is said to be worth around $10 billion. That's, that's quite a lot of turnover for uh, a small port that uh, Dubai is as far as Iran is concerned. I'm not talking about the Jebel Ali shipping port, I'm talking about the, the small trade that goes backwards and forwards across the Gulf. So it's a significant part of the Dubai economy and what nobody's focused on yet is just how much of an impact that could have on Dubai if that trade is cut. Already people are saying it's been cut by 50%, but to be perfectly honest, we don't really know because this isn't a terribly uh, a transparent uh, place for economic reports. Now, let's look at uh, what the banks are doing and what the central bank and the DIFC are doing. The DIFC, of course, is the Dubai International Financial Center, which is the offshore onshore financial center here in Dubai. Both the DIFC and its uh, Financial Services Authority and the Central Bank of the UAE have started pressing banks not to carry on business with Iraq. Now, there is some confusion, I have to say, over quite how far they've gone. You cited a report there which said that most banks have uh, stopped uh, doing business with Iraq. There are reports in Arabic language newspapers that this actually isn't the case, but that mm. what's happening is that the central bank is asking for records of business uh, and will be taking further steps after that. Well, the central bank is also saying it intends to run this exercise for just a few months. How far and how long do you think that uh, the business institutions in the UAE can continue this? Well, to a certain extent, I think the institutions will, will continue it for as long as they are required to do so. The question is, what happens to that trade elsewhere? Because, of course, the, mm. there will still be a requirement from Iran for goods and services and money uh, to travel across the Gulf. Now, the question is, if it's not going to come here because the central bank of the UAE is doing its job firmly and correctly, where is that going to go? And unfortunately, of course, there are always going to be institutions around the world that are prepared to play fast and loose with sanctions. All right, well, Robin Amler, stay with us if you can. Uh, the UAE is also finding itself embroiled uh, with a financial scandal that's developing in Afghanistan, the Kabul bank scandal, James Space, which is having widespread repercussions. That's right. Now, this is the run on Kabul bank, which mm -hmm. may affect the whole commercial banking sector. Why is Dubai key in this? Well, many of the bad investments that have been made by Kabul bank have been made in Dubai. It puts the spotlight on Dubai, as they often say in criminal investigations, follow the money. Well, if you follow the money in Afghanistan, be it the drug money, the money of uh, the Taliban, the money, huge millions of dollars from corruption. How much all the money, money are we talking well, about? Well, we're talking about a billion dollars a year, they estimate, that goes in suitcases from Kabul International Airport to Dubai Airport. They're trying to get some control over the scale of this. They've now got money counting machines at Kabul Airport. It's 
perfectly legal to export any amount of money uh, from Afghanistan. But the U.S. has now installed these machines because they're concerned that much of this money is money that America has just donated to Afghanistan, and it's immediately uh, leaving the airport in suitcases. Still, it's the situation. If you're a VIP at Kabul airport, mm. you don't have to be searched. Uh, and uh, we've heard many reports of suitcases full of money, key officials taking the money out and investing it in Dubai. That's for two reasons. There's a daily flight to Dubai. Right. Also, it's a very easy place for Afghans to get visas. Well, let's bring in Robin Amlo. Robin, how bad is this all for Dubai's image at a time when it's trying to, to clean up its image and, and become a, a major financial center in this region? You've, you've got the Iranian issue on the one hand and then the Afghan issue now. What can they do to try and fix this? I think it's, it's very difficult to say what can be done from Dubai's point of view to try and fix it. It's, it's, it's quite easy to say that follow the money from Afghanistan and perhaps this is where it ends up. But that's a problem that has to be addressed in Afghanistan. What mm. is happening here, and to be perfectly honest, I think the central bank's approach to the issue of sanctions is a demonstration of what's going on in the UAE at large, not just in Dubai, is there has been recognition here that things got totally carried away. There was a, a ridiculous um, property investment bubble. Of course there was. It burst. There's been a very messy fallout from that. Now we're seeing some signs of much more maturity in the way financial matters are being handled, in the way authorities are approaching things because they've realized that if they want to be taken seriously by the rest of the world, if they want the rest of the world, and I'm well, talking specifically about Dubai now, if they want the rest of the world to come here to do business, they have to provide a world-class framework in which to have it done. So, so what, is this, what does this mean then for the people in Dubai? There are a lot of wealthy people in Dubai. What are they going to do about this uh, clamping down? What can they do? What about the Iranians? Well, that's a moot point, of course, because there is a substantial Iranian population here. There's about 400,000 Iranians living throughout the, the UAE. Uh, and by some counts, you could argue that that actually makes them almost as, as populous as the actual Emiratis. But the, the problem that you have there with that population, so what are they going to do about it, mm. is that they're actually a mobile population. The, as, having said they're Iranians, they, they, they may have been living here for some time, but they have been mobile, they will be the traders, they will be the business people. If they have a problem that they can't solve here in terms of uh, the way they do business, then uh, they'll up sticks and go, because it's, it's quite an easy place to get up and leave from in that sense. Or but what people need to understand is that Dubai and the UAE as a whole are working to create a framework for business here and a framework for successful business and a framework, insofar as one can, of a business that is world class. Well, James Bay's many expats in Dubai certainly very worried about what's happening at Kabul Bank. What are the Afghan authorities doing? How are they trying to clamp down on this? Well, I think there is a role for the Afghan authorities, and despite what Robin says, I think there's also a role for the Dubai and UAE uh, authorities, because certainly many Western diplomats have told me they'd like to see more transparency. They believe that Dubai is effectively funding mm. criminal activity. Let me just give you one example. There is a major problem in Afghanistan with kidnappings. Mainly Afghans get kidnapped for money. Well, I can tell you in many of those cases, the family are contacted by their kidnappers. They're given a bank account details in Dubai. Dubai mm. in which to uh, deposit the ransom money. All right, certainly a very worrying trend there. Thank you very much, James Bays and Robin Amlo in Dubai. Thank you very much indeed for your insight as well.